and we'll force it down his throat. And we'll say, Gavin, if you don't do it, we're not giving you any of that fire money that we send you all the time for all the far, forest fires that you have. It's not hard to do. I'm joined now by Will Rollins, the Democratic nominee for Congress in California's 41st Congressional District. Uh, Will, that was Donald Trump in the Coachella Valley here in California, not far from where you're running uh, for Congress, again, in the 41st Congressional District against Ken Calvert. What do you make of Donald Trump threatening to withhold aid to California at a rally in California to Californians who will presumably be the ones to suffer the consequences of his decisions? I got to tell you, I've, I've talked to people who voted for Donald Trump twice, Republicans in this district who were planning to vote for Donald Trump, who have heard the comments that he made both at Coachella and then a few weeks ago when he was in Palos Verdes about withholding aid from our firefighters. Yeah. And they've said that that was a red line because a lot of Republicans in my district have family and friends who are first responders, who are firefighters, and they don't want to be in a position where their family members' lives are at risk because they've chosen to elect a president who is now threatening to withhold disaster aid from our first responders. And of course, that's not the only um, instance where Trump's created um, like some controversy regarding the disaster relief. His lies about FEMA have resulted in some actual real world consequences in North Carolina, kind of a, a, a precursor, a prelude to what would happen here in California. Can you speak on that? Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who, again, is putting people at risk, putting the lives of first responders at risk who are trying to help people who are just recovering from one of the worst hurricanes in memory in the southeastern United States. And they've got a former president whose disinformation, whose lies have now put their lives at risk. And I think, again, it's not really a partisan issue. And it reminds me a little bit, too, of what he said at the debate, right, when he talked about immigrants eating cats, eating dogs. There were Republicans in Springfield, Ohio, who that was the red line for them yeah. because kids couldn't go to school because of bomb threats, right? So his words have real consequence. And, and look, like as somebody who grew up in a split family, who has friends who previously voted for Donald Trump, I will tell you that these comments about first responders and emergency personnel are a red line for them because they are seeing their own family members and friends have to leave states as a result of threats. They're seeing their own firefighter friends and parents who are now worried about the ability to get resources that they need just to do their jobs in Southern California. And I think it's a big part of the reason we're gonna flip districts like California 41 because folks want leaders in government who are going to stand up to their own party and do the right thing for cops and firefighters on the front lines. And by the way, that like we have we have these uh, militia groups that are hunting down uh, FEMA members in North Carolina. We even have you can look at the disaster response in Puerto Rico in 2017. I believe that was Hurricane Maria, where Donald Trump held 20 billion dollars in aid to the island. Why? Because there's no electoral benefit for him. So he's already shown what happens um, in these areas where he doesn't think that he will derive enough of a benefit and how he treats the people because it doesn't, you know, redound to his political benefit, basically. Um, one of the justifications for Trump to hold a rally in Coachella is that Republicans are clearly worried about losing Ken Calvert's seat, and that's your opponent. Assuming that's why he came, which, again, you know, it may very well be that, that he is having a lot of trouble putting butts in seats in, in these swing districts, and so he wants, you know, some, some fresh people out in California that he's decided to do in the middle of his campaign, where really the battleground states are, are the whole ballgame for him. Assuming still that's why he came, what does it say about the state of your race with King Calvert? I mean, they know he's going to lose. They're, they're doing everything they can to try to save him. And it, it wasn't just Trump who came to Coachella on Saturday. It was also Mike Johnson, uh, the Speaker of the House, who came and did a rally for him in Corona or Norco yesterday, uh, on the other side of the district. So they know Calvert is in real trouble. And it's because we're able to appeal to a lot of independents, a lot of moderate Republicans who don't want to live in a world where whether the firefighters in our district get disaster aid depends on who's president of the United States. It's just un-American. And they're looking for reasonable, sane leadership. And Ken Calvert is just going to bend over backwards to do whatever Donald Trump tells him to do. It's why he voted to overturn the last election, voted against the January 6th committee, called for dropping charges against people who assaulted the U.S. Capitol. And, and it just cuts through party lines when you have a member of Congress who won't stand up to folks who assaulted cops 
at the U.S. Capitol. You've actually prosecuted insurrectionists who stormed the Capitol on January 6th. Do you think that that might have been why Trump would travel to one of the bluest states in the country in the final stretch of this campaign? Do you think that it it, it was personal to him? I do. I think he he believes that folks who were loyal to him, uh, it's that's how he operates, right? It's entirely about personal loyalty. And it's what we've seen time and time again with him, whether it's going back to Jim Comey and the, the private conversation they had at the dinner where he asked for loyalty from him or people like Ken Calvert in the House of Representatives where he demanded it and Calvert provided it. And he wants to send a signal to people in government right now that if you are loyal to him, if you vote to overturn the election for him, he'll have your back. And the bad news for these guys is that districts like mine it's going to backfire because Southern Californians don't want this kind of weird, extreme bullshit in our state. And and look at Calvert. It's like you got to win the middle to hold a purple seat. And instead, he's running all the way to the right. The same guy who voted against the largest bipartisan infrastructure bill in U.S. history and instead brings Mike Johnson, the co-sponsor of a national abortion ban to Southern California. I, I can tell you there are Republican women in my district who have come up to me and said, thank you for running against this guy. I believe in small government. I don't believe the government should be in our doctor's offices, our bedrooms. And I want you to beat Ken Calvert so that you can protect our fundamental freedom to our own bodies. Yeah, it's, it's wild how just a few years after Republicans campaigned that the ACA would usher in death panels, that now Republicans are running a campaign predicated on sticking uh, politicians in between a woman and her doctor in the doctor's office. Will, what does it mean to you to hear Trump make pardoning insurrectionists who you help prosecute a cornerstone of his campaign? Sickening. I mean, the guy is... I can't believe that we have a party that used to be the party of Ronald Reagan, right, that stood for law and order, supposedly, now cheerleading a convicted felon who took national security secrets with him to Mar-a-Lago, who encouraged a violent assault on the U.S. Capitol, whose running mate just gaslit the entire country with a line about a peaceful transfer of power in 2020 during that debate with Tim Walls. And it's it's reminds me, honestly, of 1984. It's like Orwell has written this book. Yeah. He's talked about doublespeak. These guys are mastering it. And we have to make sure that we elect people who are going to be honest with their constituents, stand up for the rule of law, have the backs of actual law enforcement officers who got the shit kicked out of them at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. That's what it means to back the blue. Backing the blue means protecting the police officers who got assaulted by people sent there by Donald Trump, who then was supported by folks like Ken Calvert, who after the attack on the U.S. Capitol did exactly what Trump told him to do and overturned the election. So that's why I really believe that we are going to get folks into our coalition in California 41 who are going to vote for common sense, sane leadership and a member of Congress who actually wants to take America to 2050, not 1950. You had alluded to this before, but Ken Calvert voted against the infrastructure law in 2021. He called it reckless spending that erodes our individual liberties and freedoms. He since lobbied the Department of Transportation for at least $100 million of that reckless spending that erodes our individual liberties and freedoms for infrastructure projects for himself. What's the message that sends to his constituents that the same money he tried his hardest to prevent from being passed was clearly good enough when it meant that he could try and take credit for it. He he thinks you're stupid. That's what he's telling his constituents. He he that's how disrespectful he is to his own constituents. He expects you to believe that he's bringing money to the district that you won't pay attention or that you're too stupid to know that this guy prevented tried to prevent the largest infrastructure bill, a bill that is bringing $300 million to his own county, to Riverside County. That's money coming over his own objection. And now he wants to get out there and gaslight you because he doesn't respect you. And I think folks, again, across party lines, just want common sense, honesty from leadership. But it's really not a surprise coming from a guy who has been ranked by nonpartisan ethics watchdogs, one of the most corrupt 
members of Congress, whose net worth has gone up by $20 million since he was first elected in 1992. He doesn't care about your wallet. The only wallet he cares about, the only life he cares about improving is his own, and he's done a good job of it in Congress. And this is a recurring theme in the GOP, right, in terms of these these leaders who who show nothing but utter contempt for their constituents or their, their hopeful constituents. I mean, Donald Trump has done it with $2 bills, crypto, silver coins, watches, shoes, hats. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, right? So what do you make of this this perpetual grift and 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 showing utter disdain for for you know the people whose votes they're trying to seek from you know everybody in the GOP from Donald Trump all the way down to Ken Calvert. Yeah, we need normal people in Congress. We need people who care about public service, who actually want to pass anti-corruption reforms that should apply to people in both parties. That's why I'm out there talking about a ban on insider trading in real estate, a ban on self-enrichment, the kinds that folks are seeing now from Donald Trump. The worst part of this, right, is he's ripping off his own supporters um, and preventing members of Congress from becoming lobbyists after they've served in D.C. And I think one of the things that's most appealing to people across party lines in my district is it's just not a partisan issue. People are sick and tired of folks like my opponent who go to Congress when I was eight years old, the first year he was elected, and use their own position, use your tax dollars to line their own pockets. And the only way that is going to change is if more of us get off the sidelines and run against these people in districts all over the country where they have used their seats to make themselves fat cats. To that point, then, uh, a campaign finance reform group uh, filed an ethics complaint against Ken Calvert, uh, alleging that he failed to disclose information about various rental properties that he owns in Riverside County. So again, another recurring theme that we're seeing on the right, where these people are not only using the government to enrich themselves, but also refusing to actually be transparent about their their own efforts. What was your reaction to, to that ethics complaint? Yeah, I mean, this is the guy who is refusing to debate for a reason, right? And he knows that if we talked about the details of that complaint, he would have no answer to it. And I've been saying again and again, don't don't take my word for this, just Google Fox News, Ken Calvert corruption, and look at the seven minute documentary that they did talking about his use of earmarks to benefit his own real estate. And then Google the LA Times story from over the summer, Look at the reporting done about his failure to disclose properties that were near transportation projects he used your tax dollars to fund, right? And he's he's kind of shameless about this. He thinks that there's nothing wrong with it. And that's a huge part of the reason the guy won't show up to debate. And it does a disservice not only to Democrats in our district, but to the Republicans who also are owed an explanation from their member of Congress about why he is using their tax dollars to line his pockets. Now, you and I have spoken about this before, but just for posterity here, for those who are watching this, you know, an interview with you for the first time, can you speak on how Ken Calvert actually got his start in Congress? Because this is this is, uh, you know, in in my opinion, as uh, as 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 vile as it gets. Yeah, this is a guy who in 1992, during his first campaign against Mark Takano, who uh, later became a member of Congress. This was back when Mark first ran in the early 90s. Ken Calvert, as part of a political strategy, outed Mark Takano. He sent homophobic mailers across all of Riverside County asking voters whether they would have a congressman who represented them or San Francisco. Mark was not even out to his family at that point in time. And it just tells you where this guy's values are. Yeah. We'll say and do anything to get power and to keep it. And folks are so pumped up to finally have a new generation of leadership representing them in the Inland Empire because we've got a member who doesn't believe in equality for our community, who doesn't believe in women's reproductive freedom, who thinks that America is better back in the 1950s than a modern society where all of us can achieve whatever we want to, regardless of who we love, what we look like, and have women have the same reproductive freedom as men, right? So I think this just goes to show you how out of touch Calvert is with his own constituents. And people know that 32 years of corruption and extremism are enough. And that's exactly why we are going to win on November 5th.
to that point then, Will, how can how can we help your campaign? And especially those of us, look, this is Southern California. It is a, a true, boo, true blue liberal bastion out here. So there are a lot of people who are looking to help who don't often have the opportunity to do so because all of our representatives here where I live in, in, in Los Angeles itself are, are otherwise Democrats. So so how can uh, how can people who are watching right now help your campaign? So they can go to willrollinsforcongress.com. Uh, they can help us with a contribution because we have people like Elon Musk spending millions of dollars to try to help Ken Calvert stay in office. We need to keep raising resources to compete with him. But you can also come out to Corona and knock doors. If you live in Southern California and you've got a safe blue seat, help us out. Drive to our districts because your, your voice can really make the difference between whether we elect Hakeem Jeffries or continue to have Mike Johnson as the Speaker of the House. And if you can canvas for us, you can go to our website, find the volunteer link. You can also sign up to do a phone bank because every person we reach between now and November 5th will be the difference between whether Democrats retake the House majority. And I would also, I would echo that, make sure for especially those living in Southern California here uh, who are looking for something to do, uh, head over to Will's website, which we'll put in the post description of this video and uh, and on a link on this screen, head over to Will, Will's website, do whatever you can to, to help flip. This is one of the closest races in the entire country. And also for those who've already gotten your ballots, which should be most people here in California, get them filled out and sent back in early so that this campaign and other campaigns in California can instead focus their resources on true undecided voters. So help the campaigns, give them something of a contribution in the sense that they don't have to spend their limited resources, their limited personnel texting you, reaching out to you, trying to get you out to vote and can instead focus on people who are truly on the fence. Will, best of luck on the campaign trail and uh, and uh, thank you for taking the time today. Thank you, Brian. Great to be with you. Thank you.